Hey guys, so I am going to do a book club series on my channel and I know it sounds kind of weird, but you guys seem to always be interested in what I'm reading and I'm trying to read a lot more and I think this will give me a lot of incentive to read more. I actually read a whole book in a day. Now when I show you the book, you're going to laugh at me, but for me, I'm really proud of that because a book in a day is really hard for me because I do a million other things, but I've been sick, so I had nothing better to do. So I'm really proud. It took me about five to six hours to read it. I'm a really slow reader too. So the first book in this book club thing is The Shadow Club, and I'm going to try and review these as soon as I finish them because the problem with the Hunger Games review that so many of you hated, a lot of you liked it, so thank you, but I got a lot of hate on that because I, I reviewed it after I finished Catching Fire, I think. No. I think I reviewed it like two to three weeks after I read it and so I had forgotten a bunch of stuff about it and so many people were like being defensive about it like no it's called this and it's this. First of all, side note, I don't know why I'm getting so many corrections on how to say PETA. I don't know why everyone's spelling it for me because I know how it's spelled, it's in the novel, but how is it, how is it <laughs> pronounced because in the movie they pronounce it the same way I do, so I don't know what is going on with that. Anyway, I'm sorry about that little ramble about PETA, but PETA, PETA, like it sounds the same to me, like two E's, one E, I don't know what the difference is between the two pronunciations. I don't think you can really correct someone's pronunciation over the internet anyway. So video response me how you say PETA, because I don't know how else to say PETA. PETA? PETA? I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying wrong, so if you guys could help me out with that. That'd be great. This video, I'm going to start with The Shadow Club by Neil Shusterman. One of my favorite books of all time is Ever Lost by Neil Shusterman, and I read that in high school. Shusterman? Yeah, I'm just making sure I'm saying his name right. Um, I read that book in high school, and I loved it. It's such a great, like, fantasy-type novel. This one's all reality. It's no fantasy or anything. It looks kind of spacey. Like, when I saw it, I thought it'd be, like, space. Um, but it's The Shadow Club. A quick little premise about it and then I'll get into what I like and didn't like about it. Um, it's about these group of kids who are always second best. They're always following sh someone's shadow. They're never the best and they're tired of these people that keep taking first place, so to speak. So the main character is Jared and he is um, a runner and they're, it's set in like 8th ninth grade which is in middle school. Um, in the book, ninth grade is considered still middle school, and they explain it in the book, but it's not high school yet. High school for them is 10th through 12th. Anyway, so um, Jared is a runner, and he always gets second place in the races. He's always the second fastest. He's never number one, and he always follows in the footsteps of this guy named Austin, and he is the number one runner on the track team. So he and his friend Cheryl, who um, is also second best, she's her competition, I guess you would say, is her cousin Rebecca, and she is a singer, and they both like to sing. They're both good at singing, but Rebecca's always looked at as the better singer, I guess. So Cheryl and uh, Jared always talk about what they do to these people, and then they start wishing they were never born because they, they want to be number one for once, you know? And I feel like it's a relatable book in that sense that we've all felt like we're never the best. Um, so I think it's a good concept for a teen novel. Teen fiction is my favorite type of fiction. It's the kind that I write. It's the kind that I typically read. So a lot of the books I'm going to talk about are teen fiction. I just love them. Um, there's something sentimental about teen fiction. So that's what this is, by the way, in case you didn't catch on. But um, so they decide to come up with a club and they decide to call it the shadow club because they're in the shadows of someone else and they get a bunch of people from their school together I think it's about seven of them um, and they decide eventually what the premise of the club is going to be about because they meet and they sign this like contract and they say you know I don't know what what they say but anyway they um, needed a point everyone was like well what are we doing in the club just hanging out you know I could hang out with my own friends and none of these people are friends to begin with except for Cheryl and Jared and her little brother Randall so um, they decide to do some pranks on these people that are number one and they're innocent you know and let's see what are some of the pranks that they pulled trying to think. Oh, um, gosh, I can't remember because I'm so wrapped up in the end of the book. And I read it yesterday too. 
let's see let's see there's a they're innocent pranks like I think one of them the the way that they get Austin who's the runner guy who's number one um, someone has a tarantula and they take the tarantula and put it inside his hood and he puts his hood up and then when he takes it off there's a spider on his head and he like freaks out about it eventually a spider gets killed someone steps on it but they're innocent little pranks like that nothing like super harmful the most extreme one that they pull towards the middle is they paint the there's a swimmer in the group in the club and his competition is another swimmer who's a better swimmer and they paint his toenails while he sleeps they break into his house and they paint his toenails red and he doesn't notice until the coach notices and everyone starts making fun of his red toenails so it's pretty innocent dangerous like breaking into someone's house but innocent nonetheless nothing harmful but then things take a turn for the worst and there are these violent crimes taking place like people could die type of crimes um, there's a bomb involved someone's uh, bike brakes are cut and she's like flying down the road into the intersection and she eventually crashes and it's like really dangerous things and they have no idea who's doing this there's some suspects they think it's this nerdy kid who um, overheard their meeting once they think it's him who's doing it um, and there's a huge twist in the end it's really good I'm not gonna give anything about the end away but I ended up being so disgusted with this group of kids like I was just like oh my god what are you doing like you are becoming those bullies and it was awful like not awful in a bad way but just really sad and how they totally became bullies and it's intense definitely intense book and I didn't at first like I got three quarters of the way and I was really bored and I was like you know it's super middle school type things and then you know the violent things start happening and I'm like oh my god like that is so bad anyway the thing I didn't like about it like I love Neil Shusterman and everything but his writing in this book is totally different he uses so many exclamation points it's not even funny that I can't even handle it like it's so ridiculous like why are you using exclamation points in the middle of narration like it's one thing to use them in a dialogue but this is narration like the main character is telling a story and yes it's in first person but why so many exclamation points I don't get it and he emphasizes words by capitalizing them not italicizing which you're supposed to italicize at least I always thought um, I'm no expert I'm not published or anything so thumbs up to him but I just think that if you're gonna emphasize a word to the point of capitalizing the whole word with an exclamation point you need to like italicize it instead less you know jarring I mean it's supposed to be jarring the event and the example I'm thinking of but that really bugged me about the writing itself um, some things I felt really needed to be edited out um, so it's not the best type of writing the plots really great um, I really liked where it went it does start off a little slow but it's only like this big so honestly it's a really really fast read like literally if I could read it in a day anyone can read this in a few hours so um, I do overall recommend it if you like teen fiction. If you're more into the adult novel type thing, I would not recommend this at all. It's definitely a younger type book and it's sometimes it's hard to tell if a younger type novel is really reaching to its audience or not. This one definitely is. Like sometimes they're really mature or even adults can enjoy them. Um, you know, like Everlost, I enjoyed it so much. I still enjoy it as an adult and I don't really see it as so innocent type thing. This one's kind of like that. Um, it's definitely a child, non-childish book because it's pretty intense at the end and there's a little bit of gore, just a little bit, and it's nothing like bad. Um, it'd be a good movie, I think, but um, I definitely recommend it if you like this kind of book, like the kind of, kind of really easy to follow writing that you don't need a, a college degree to understand or anything you just have to graduate middle school that's all I'm gonna say so um, it's definitely one of those books so I feel like I'm just rambling right now but definitely check it out if you like a really fast read um, especially if you can get it on sale somewhere but the the plots really cool um, it's just a really nice little story and it's really impactful and there's a huge meaning to it and it's it's really impactful is what I want to say again but I don't want to repeat myself anyway it's moving so I definitely liked it um it's not the best written book I've ever read in my life so 
definitely keep that in mind. A lot of exclamation points, so if you don't like that, then you know you might not want to look into it. But Neil Shesterman's always been a favorite. Um, let, let me know if you like any of his other books. Um, I looked into a couple more, but I never purchased them. I got my book on Amazon for a couple dollars, but um, let me know what your favorite books are besides this one and Everlast, because I've read those two. Um, any other books by him, I do like his writing nonetheless. He's really easy to read. And, I mean, he's not my favorite author, but I do enjoy him sentimentally because I read him throughout high school. So, definitely check out that book. Hopefully this book review is a little bit better for you guys. Let me know. Um, and then also give me book recommendations. I would love it if we all, could all read, like, the same book and then we all talk about it. That would be really cool, whether in video responses or comments. That would be fun. So, let me know what your favorite books are or what you're reading right now. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.